Thank you so much for tuning in to She's All Over the Place with Kitty Aki. That's me. And I'm your co-host for this episode, Alessandra Levy. Today, I have a super special guest. Her name is Cody Marr, and she is a certified simple shui house therapist. So I'm so excited to have you here, Cody. Welcome, and thanks so much for being a part of this podcast today. Thank you, Alessandra. It's awesome to be here. I'm really excited to dive into this conversation with you. Yes, I'm so excited too. And, you know, the reason for this is I remember seeing you kind of posting some little tips and tricks and the word house therapy. And I'm like, whoa, this sounds amazing. I mean, I know we're going to dive into it and get specific, but I just knew I had to have you on here because um, as the listeners know, this whole segment is all about health and wellness and beauty and fashion and just order all encompassing health and wellness. And I felt like this had to have its place here on the podcast. So I'm so excited. I know you, but the listeners don't. So if you would love to just introduce yourself, give us a little background on you. Sure. Thank you. So I've been in the wellness world for about 10 years now. Prior to that, I was actually a circus performer. So I spent the first 10 years of my professional career um, traveling and teaching aerial acrobatics Um, performed with many circuses. And then as my body started to age and shift, I just, I also shifted with that and got into health and wellness. And at first I was just like a sponge, you know, I learned a lot of different modalities, got a lot of different certifications from nutritional counseling to uh, more energy work based to um, some hypnosis techniques. And throughout that, I was always interested in my space. I would say even before that, um, was always interested in how my space impacted me and how I could feel better in my space. I never cared too, too much about what a space looked like, but to me, it was always about what a space felt like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I sort of dabbled here and there in feng shui, read a book or two. And and a few years ago, I came across um, this teacher who is now my teacher. Her name is Amanda Gibby Peters, and she runs a company called Simple Shui. And I just started learning from her. I started taking all of her classes. Um, and this year she offered a certification course. So I'm all about it. It's just been amazing. And, you know, I've had a lot of struggles with my own health. I had a severe health crisis about nine years ago. And that sort of was what fuels me. And I think a lot of times a missing piece for people is their environment. You know, there's a lot we can do within the body, with what we eat, with what we drink, with what we think, and all of those things are really important. But how our, how we're living in our space is equally important. And so I'm really excited to sort of bring my focus to that and help people feel good in their spaces. Yeah, that's, that's really great. And before we, you know, we get into the what it is and, and, and what's so great about it, I just think it's so Um, The theme that I'm getting while I'm talking to a lot of the guests and even just out in the world talking to friends and family and people that I meet, it, it seems to be this theme of people who have unfortunately had to go through severe health crises or just whether it's emotional health or, or physical health or mental health, where it, it actually shifts and changes you to the point where you become a seeker or, or just by default, like you almost have to be right. You're kind of just looking at your life going, okay, I need to find answers and I need to help myself. And so, I mean, it's not really a question. It's just more of something that I'm observing as I'm sort of diving into this. Um, it's, it's a common theme. It's a common thread that those of us who have had to deal with things that are more severe, it's, it's almost become part of our life, like journey and what we're trying to accomplish because we just have no other choice. We're like, well, we got to figure this out. And, and then we become these seekers of finding oh, you know, this works and this works and oh, I'm going to try this. And we just become like lifelong seekers. So totally. I couldn't agree more. I mean, you know, I am on a mission to, to have people maybe start a little before that because yes, you know, um, that would be nice. I don't regret anything that I've been through and I'm really thankful Mm -hmm. for all of the experiences that I've had, but I certainly wouldn't choose it for anybody. I wouldn't choose it for someone I love. Um, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. Um, So I think I agree with you 100%. And this is 
you know, it's part of our culture. We're really not taught to care or take care of our wellness Mm -hmm. too much until it's in our face. However, I do think that's shifting. And I think the younger generation, um, sometimes maybe it's fueled by vanity, but hey, that's fine. Um, (laughs) is starting to come around more to the importance of self care, the importance, you know, we didn't, we didn't have that growing up, like the the self care aisle in Barnes and Nobles was like, somewhere you didn't want to be seen, you know, so (laughs) I do think that's shifting and changing. And I think the more, you know, podcasts like this are so helpful Mm -hmm. to just help people open up to how important it is to take care of your health before you have no other choice. Agree a thousand percent. And yes, uh, I actually did used to work, not at Barnes and Nobles, but I did used to work at Borders. (laughs) And I actually always loved when I had to put the books away in like the self-help area, because I was always like, I never heard of any of these books or like, I don't even know who these people are. So to me, it was like, kind of, I would like look at the back and be like, what is this about? So it's like, I kind of, almost felt like even before, like you said, before the crisis even happened, I was sort of like interested, like, oh, people read about like how to become better in whatever way. So I think, yeah, it could also just be like some people also have that little like already they have like a desire to want to Mm -hmm. kind of be that way and are a seeker or a searcher kind of thing and want to learn. Like you said before, you just became a sponge and you wanted Mm -hmm. to learn as much as possible. So I think that's really great. But um. I do, since you are here to talk about house therapy. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I'm sure some of those, some of these listeners out here, listener out there, like, you're like, what the heck is house therapy? I mean, I know, like you mentioned, feng, uh, feng shui, like people have heard of that before, but I'd love to know, um, just why don't you go ahead and explain it for the, the viewer, the listeners and the viewers who would totally. love to know a little bit more about it. Absolutely. So house therapy is a term that was created by my teacher. Uh, Her name is Amanda Gibby Peters, and she is the she owns a company called Simple Shui, and she started a certification program, and that's called house therapy. So I am a Simple Shui certified house therapist. However, at its nuts and bolts, it is the practice of Feng Shui. Mm -hmm. House therapy really refers to an ethos, a way of practicing um, some of those pillars are coming from a space, you know, of love and, Mm -hmm. um, and just the really the lens that we're looking at feng shui through. So it is feng shui. House therapy is feng shui. It's just a term that sort of, uh, encapsulates the type of practitioner I seek to be in the world, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course. And so my next question would be to dive into why is this important? Like what about, feng shui and house therapy what about what about that is important you know benefits and just kind of name some of those things totally I could talk about this all day so I'll try and be succinct (laughs) so I think it's helpful to sort of throw out a little bit of a definition around feng shui and there's a Mm -hmm. lot of different ways that we can define it but one of the definitions that I like is just it's a practice of aligning ourselves with the energy of fortune so we're Mm. practicing feng shui in our homes, whether we like it or not, we're interacting with our spaces, we're making Mm -hmm. decisions about where a piece of furniture goes, or how often we clean, or whether we leave the windows open, or, Mm. you know, our every space has an energy has a flow of energy to it. And when you're in your space, living in your space, you're interacting with that. So people feel it all the time. I mean, Mm. people go into spaces, and they're like, wow, it feels so good in here. Or they go into a space, and they're like, oh, what's going on? I don't feel good, you know? So it's something that we're naturally doing. And so what I love so much about Feng Shui is it's just really opening our eyes to the intricacies of how we're living in our spaces, how we are impacting our spaces and our spaces are impacting us, creating that relationship and Mm -hmm. really learning how to align our desires, both our internal health desires, you know, be it physical health, emotional well-being, or even things like relationships or travel or love. Um, there's, it's just a, your house is this space of opportunity to really co-create the life that you want. And it's, it's, it provides endless opportunities to do so. Wow. Okay. So a few things. I'm just, this <laughs> yeah. is amazing. No, this is so great. Um, okay. So it, the way you described it, it just made me kind of have a visualization like that your house is this like also a living, breathing thing. Yes. It's your, yes. your apartment, your house, wherever you live, it's a living, breathing um, entity that you're 
in relationship with it just reminded me when you were talking about how you know you walk into a space and you might be like wow I'm I feel very peaceful or like you walk into a place and you're like my chest is tight I don't feel good you know whatever Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so that I think that's just so fascinating to really start to um feel like you and your house or your apartment or wherever you live you're like having this living breathing relationship a hundred percent I mean a plus to you because that's how I think of it. And that's sometimes how I describe it. Our spaces are alive. They Mm. are, they are, you know, I like to think of my space as a member of my family and I take care Mm. of my space and interact with my space and listen to my space as such. And, you know, our concept of energy as a, as a human species, I I won't get too esoteric Mm -hmm. here, but it is expanding. And we all recognize that spaces hold energy, they hold a vibration. And so when you start to invite this aspect into your life, when you start to look around your space and feel this camaraderie and like, Hey space, like I'm inviting you in, you're, Mm. I'm opening to you you know, what my teacher always says, once you start talking to your space, it's going to start talking back. And that absolutely Mm. is true. Um, Spaces have desires and they have Mm -hmm. things that they want. And we are just as much serving them as they are serving us. Yeah. I think just when I'm thinking about this in my own personal life, I can think of a few things. But the first thing is I remember when we first moved into our, um, into the house that we're currently in, it was August, 2020. I remember Mm -hmm. specifically going, wait a minute, we need to make sure that the bed is facing a certain direction because Mm -hmm. I knew that there are certain directions that are not as, uh, like you said, trying to find fortune, good fortune. I knew that some of the directions were not going to be good for our health and well-being. And so Mm -hmm. I made sure, I mean, I I wasn't able to pick the ideal one, but I think I was able to pick like the next ideal one just because of the way the room is shaped. And of course the way our bed is, because we decided to pick the smallest bedroom for our bedroom because we're both musicians and voice actors and whatever. So we wanted to have the two bigger rooms as the studios, but that's what it reminded me of. And I think the second thing it reminds me of, of is I just have this like sort of almost like a, uh, like an alarm clock that goes off in my head or like some kind of alarm that goes off where it's like, okay, it's time to clean. Like I can feel it's mm-hmm. dusty or like I can mm-hmm. feel that it, there's a lot of dog hair on the ground. I need to vacuum. Like, so for me, I think my brain goes to like keeping the space very cleanly and like when it seems like you know it needs to get dusted or we need to like you said open the windows get some fresh air in so that's kind of what I thought of but I know it's so much more than that (laughs) it is but you also kind of encapsulated it in a really beautiful way because you know one thing I love about feng shui and that this kind of differs when it comes to like health and healing on a on a different level let's say like in Mm -hmm. um you know when you're working with your physical body, like you've had this experience. Sometimes when you're dealing with a health condition, you feel like you've tried everything and nothing is working, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it can be really frustrating and you don't know which way to turn. And you could try this homeopathy or you could try this Mm -hmm. prescription drug or, you know, there's so many options and it gets very confusing. And what I love with Feng Shui is that it's a system. It's really ancient. This is old wisdom that we are using in the West now. It comes from China. It's very Mm -hmm. old. Um, And there's always something to do. There's always a remedy. There's always a shift you can make. There is no um, what we call chi challenge or energy challenge in the Mm. home that is not workable with, right? So there's always a different angle to look at something that you're experiencing in your life and work on it in your home. And to me, that brings a lot of peace into my body and a lot of calm, just knowing like, okay, sometimes I don't know what to do on a health level. I don't know what the right food is to eat. I don't know this. I don't know that. But I always know what to do when it comes to my home or I always know what to try. Um, so that's something that I really love. And and I think you're right. You know, it it, it can be as simple as looking at the, the way your bed is facing or, you know, optimizing the front door or making sure you're cleaning. Um But it's also amazing, you know, you're a very health conscious person, so I'm not surprised that you have a cleaning alarm that goes off in your mind. (laughs) But some people are not, right? Some people are not. And that says something. So once I start Mm. working with a client in this capacity and we start having conversations, what is amazing to me is how I'll reflect something to them about what I'm seeing in their home and they'll reflect to me, oh my God, that's exactly what's happening in my life. So it's this mirror that we have, you know, if your house is always dusty, if it's super cluttered, 
What is that reflecting back to you? What is that telling you about yourself? And when you start working with that clutter on the outside, it helps you work with whatever's going on on the inside. So for example, here's a really simple example. Let's say you're not feeling confident, right? You're feeling really shy and you're feeling like you can't get yourself out in the world. So you could work with your front door. You could make your front door, which is what we call the mouth of chi. It's where energy enters our space. Mm. It speaks to opportunities. It speaks to luck coming in, right? How, how everything enters into our world. Yeah. And you could optimize that area. You could make it bright and colorful and you can make sure it's very visible. And that's a way to start working on your self-confidence that's a little less confronting than say like right. just throwing yourself into the fire. Yeah, go out there and network and you're like, yeah, <laughs> exactly, right, exactly. So it just gives us this like other language that we get to use to work on whatever's showing up for us in our lives. Wow, okay, so that seems like one benefit. So that you just talked about, right? With the being more confident, making your do- your front door a place that seems warm and welcoming and maybe, like you said, some bright, fun colors or just something that really draws attention. And mm-hmm. it's like your house is confident and then you'll be confident, that sort of thing. So what are some other benefits that you might find through Feng Shui and house therapy? Totally. So, I mean, we could talk about anything. Like there's really a, a, a route to take for everything. So it's really dependent upon what someone's wanting either what someone's struggling with or what someone's wanting to call into their house. Um, When we're talking about first steps, I do always, you know, there's a lot of different directions again that we can go. And when I'm working one-on-one with someone, it's going to be very individualized. And I do want to say here, and this is, you didn't ask this question, but I do think it's important to say Mm -hmm. one thing that people come to me often as I've started to put more content around this Mm -hmm. out is like, is this wrong? Is my desk facing this way wrong? Is the fact that I have a plant here bad? Is this, you know, there there can be a lot of black and white thinking yeah. around like, you know, you were saying this with fruit your bed. I don't want my bed to be in a bad direction. I want it to be right, you know. So yes. Yeah. There is no such thing. There's no, okay. there are more optimal ways. And yeah. depending on your situation, depending on what you're saying, there could be a reason that that you needs to be adjusted. But mm-hmm. That's where sort of house therapy and the simple shui way looks at things a little different. It's not so black and white. It's like, Mm -hmm. what is the person telling me about their life? And it's very tailored to what you're going through. Um, So I did just want to say that. But going back to your question about like how feng shui can help in any area of your life, really. And there's so, for example, let's say you're, you know, we talked a little bit about the front door and just want to let everybody know that's very basic. (laughs) That is very basic. But the front door is the first place to work with in general, making sure, you know, here's some bullet points. Make sure your door is visible. So Mm -hmm. the general rule is if a mailman can or male woman or male person cannot find your house, Neither can all the things you want and energy, okay? Um, Make sure it's clear and clutter-free and not too dark. So make sure it's inviting and warm. Make sure you have a nice, you know, welcome mat or something that makes Mm -hmm. you happy. And then just keep it, keep that area clean as best you can and, and walk your entrance. Like if you have, if you're someone that goes into their house mostly through the garage and never uses the front door, Ooh. find a reason to use your front door. Find a reason Ooh. to go in that way. And if you live in an apartment, this still applies. You don't have to worry about the entrance to your apartment building that's out of your control, but you can work with your own front door and make that space really inviting. Um so just another example real quick since you since yeah. I already gave that one. Let's say someone wants to call in love. They want to call in a partner. And I look at their space. I look in their bedroom. So we'd work in the bedroom in this case. Mm-hmm. I look in their bedroom and their bed is against a wall and they have one nightstand. Mm-hmm. Now that's not very conducive to having a partner, right? Because yeah. <laughs> you only have the one nightstand. So it would be about <laughs> making sure that they have two nightstands that are identical mm-hmm. on either side of the bed, yeah. seeing if they can have um, some pairs of things around, you know, pairs of uh, two candles that are the same, mm. um, making sure there's some passion that's showing up in that room. Yeah. So the color red or, you know, something else that ignites passion mm-hmm. uh, and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's really working in that way, if that makes sense. I know that I was a lot that. of, a lot of words. <laughs> oh, that's so good. And it just made me laugh because this, <laughs> the nightstand, it's so funny. It felt like you were like directly talking to me, even though my husband and I have been together for, you know, over five, well, we've been married for over five years. We've been together for like, you know, a decade at this point, but it's been 
the bone of contention for us mm. because I always have a nightstand and he's like, where's my nightstand? But whatever bedroom we've had, like we've never had room to have both. So I don't know why it just made me laugh so hard because he's always just like, where's my night? Like, of course now it's a joke, but you know, he's like, so, uh, did you get me a nightstand? I'm like, it's like the way his, the way our bed is, is, um, his side of the bed is like almost against the door frame. Mm -hmm. So it can't be at one, but then there's one on my side. And then we've thought about, I've even said, well, I could push mine against the wall and move it to your side. And he goes, yeah, but you got more stuff. You got hand cream you got to put on before, but, but anyway, I just think that's so funny that that's the, the example you, you chose because that, is very near and dear to my heart. (laughs) I love that. And it's interesting, right? Because you're saying, you're telling me something through this conversation. Like, even though it's become a joke, it's something that he's noticing and he's feeling. And, you know, like over time, like as you guys grow and evolve and move to a different space, it might be interesting to see what happens when he does have a nightstand, when he does feel like he has that space, you know? Oh yeah. That'll be amazing. And I know for sure that wherever we end up next, like that is at the top of my to-do list for it. Night stands. <laughs> yes. And like like you said, matching ones that look really nice. And mm-hmm. yeah, and then that way we can have what we need on our nightstands. But anyway, that's really funny. I love that. That's a great example. And um, it's amazing. It sounds like even just a few little, yes. little adjustments can make a world of difference, which I think is also important to note because I think sometimes when mm-hmm. uh, seekers are looking to do new things in our lives, we think we have to do it all at once and that we got to do it perfectly. And we have to play by the, you know, like to the T and you're just saying, Hey, you know what? Just start with little things here. Like make sure that there's not a bunch of leaves on your welcome mat. When you walk out, it's not cluttered out there. It's clean and ready for people to come in that kind of thing. So I, I think that's great to keep in mind. And I mean, Obviously, you talking to me, I'm like keeping that in mind. But now thinking about the listener, they're going to go, oh, good. Okay. It could be little, little changes here and there. So I guess what I'd love to talk about um, is now that we've, you know, been kind of touching on some, some things, some examples and why it's important and how it can impact you and your disclaimer of saying, hey, there's no wrong way to do this. You're not going to do something bad. It's not going to cause, you know, the apocalypse to happen just because you put your bed the wrong way. So I think that's also really important. But if the listener is, is like, Hey, this sounds awesome. And my space needs a little bit of a, you know, like a a change or just, I want to bring something in. Like, what are some, I mean, you kind of touched upon it with, of course, your door going into Mm -hmm. your house, but what are maybe some other small steps that could help someone who's interested in trying to just uh, give their, their space a little, a little, a little make love. Over. Yeah, a yeah. little love. Yeah. Well, I also love that you, I mean, I'm, you really, again, zeroed in on something really important, which is small changes over time. Like you don't want to read a book or a blog about feng shui and spend the weekend making a million different changes in your house, because <laughs> yeah. first of all, it's going to be tiring. And second of mm-hmm. all, um, it's going to make it unclear because one of the goals mm-hmm. with feng shui is that we can see the fruits of our labor. So we can see that, okay, I move my bed. So I have two identical nightstands and I feel X, Y, Z about that. And sometimes it's not so obvious, but sometimes Mm -hmm. it is really, really obvious, right? Like you make a change and there's an immediate reaction from your, in your life or environment. So you do want to make small changes over time Mm -hmm. in terms of ways that people can start to work with the feng shui um, easily. I would say, well, this just came to my mind, so I'm going to go with it. One of my favorite, you know, routines and rituals are really important. So interacting with your space in a regular way is one of the best ways to start. So I'm going to give two simple examples. Both are, again, from my teacher. Very, I'm very big on credit. So yes. big credit to Amanda Gibby Peters for both of these tips. The first is to bring fresh flowers into your space on a regular basis. Oh, I love so a lot of people that. think this is indulgent to go buy themselves flowers. But that's kind of important is to indulge yourself and to Mm. love your space. It's a way to A, show your space love. It's a way to bring alive, fresh energy into your space. 
So bring fresh flowers into your home once a week, once a month, whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. And you can either put them in the center of your home or your kitchen. Those would be the sort of two recommended spaces. There's reasons for that, (laughs) but we won't get into that. We'd need a lot more time. And the second one is, um, I don't know why it's coming to my mind, but I trust my instincts. So I'm going to go with it, is to put your house to bed at night and to wake it up in the morning. So if you have windows in your apartment or home, which most people do, all that what's called yang energy, that upward awake energy is coming in constantly, whether it's daytime or nighttime. So one simple way to sort of give your house a rest and allow yourself to rest a little more is to put down your shades at night Mm -hmm. or close your shades at night. And just to have this routine of walking around your space at night, closing your shades, um, Mm. turning off any lights that might be on, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe tidying up the blankets on the couch or the pillows on the couch yeah, and just putting your house to bed. And then in the morning you do the opposite. You walk around, you open up the shades, um, you know, maybe you spray something nice in the air if that's something that you like to do Mm -hmm. or light a candle, but just creating this intentional time with your space is a great way because your space will then start to show you where, where it wants your attention next. Wow. Okay. I need a minute to sit with that because (laughs) that is awesome. It's funny because I think intuitively a lot of people might already do something like that where they put the blinds down because they don't want anyone peeking into their house or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then in the morning they're like, Hey, let's get the sun or let's open the window. Let's get the shades up, whatever. But it's still, even though it's like, I know that it's still just, even just that it feels so profound. Mm -hmm. Um, even just something like that, like you're saying the way you're reframing it of like putting your house to bed, waking your house up, like it's a cycle that you're going through as well. It's like, you're including your space in that, which I think is so amazing. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And I just want to say like, you nailed it again. Sorry to interrupt you, but this goes back to something we started with, which is you're already practicing feng shui on a certain Mm. level. You just aren't aware of it. So a lot of this is very intuitive. It's stuff we already do. Most of us already try and make our spaces look or feel a certain way. But it's just sort of getting the education so that you know what you're doing and you can make um, slightly maybe sometimes different decisions and have a why behind it. It's becoming intentional in your space which yeah. transforms into your life too. Sorry to interrupt you, but I do. No, that that's in. amazing. And intentional, right. It's like, it, it's again, another theme throughout all this is, you know, your intention coming back to connecting with your, either your body or your mind or your spirit, all of the above, right. Just kind of reconnecting and taking a moment to kind of slow down and, and realize that there are intentions that are to be made with, with taking care of yourself, your space, which is all encompassing anyway, right? When we're talking Mm -hmm. about overall health and wellness. Okay. This is awesome. I feel like, uh, yeah, (laughs) I feel feel like we might have to do like a part two, like another time. This is like, this is amazing. Okay. So, um, before I say, you know, uh, where can people find you? How can they reach out? How can they find more about what you're doing? Um, are there any other, little uh tips or just suggestions or anything else you want to say before we before we uh have to unfortunately say goodbye for now (laughs) goodbye for now for sure um yeah I would just say you know if this is overwhelming to you because some people hear this and they feel inspired and excited Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. some people feel feel hear this and feel overwhelmed. So if this is overwhelming to you, just know that this is a practice. This is not something you do hopefully one time and then stop. And that (laughs) takes time, right? That takes time. And, and there's, and going slow is really important and just stay away from the fear and the perfection. Those are some Mm. things that can really creep into the space, especially if you're already that type of person, it can be very easy to all of a sudden look around your space and be like, Oh my God, I'm doing everything wrong. Mm. You know? Yeah. Um, So just, don't Google uh, feng shui, look for reliable sources. Um, And yeah, just take a deep breath. And if this is something that's interesting to you, just know that um, it it doesn't have to happen all at once and you're not doing anything wrong. Amazing. Okay. So 
where can people find you? Where can they see what you're doing? How can they reach out to you? Give us all the details. Totally. So I would say um, right now the best place to connect with me is on Instagram. Um, I am at C-O-D-Y, my last name, Mar, M-A-H-E-R 18. I share content about Feng Shui and house therapy there. Um, my website is currently under construction, but you can also go to agencywellness.org and you can email me if you're interested in um, anything that I'm doing and we can connect that way. Also, if you do that and get on my email list, I am going to be opening a very, 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 very affordable <laughs> uh, Feng Shui class that'll be cool. a couple of sessions in the new year. I'm not sure exactly yet what the theme for that will be. I'm still kind of mm -hmm. sitting with that, but it's going to be 100% for beginners. And being in a group setting with this can also be really helpful because you can talk to other people and you can see what they're doing and you can get ideas. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say that right now, Instagram or my website are the best places to connect. Okay, amazing. Well, I just want to say thank you so much. This you know, even, even in this like bite sized session, I feel like there's so much that I'm even thinking about, like for, for my own house. And so I have to imagine that the listeners are like, Oh, let me get a new welcome mat or let me get a, mm -hmm. you know, let me get some more flowers. I mean, I have a whole garden in front of my house that has like eight different kinds of flowers. Like, and when we first moved in, we used to bring, we used to make little arrangements, like almost a couple times a week. And I'm like, I need mm. to start doing that again. So yes, do this it. is such a good reminder. And so I'm just so grateful and thankful that you um, are sharing all this wealth of information with our listeners. And uh, I'm serious. We might have to do this again. So I just totally, want to I'm thank here. you. <laughs> so thank you so much. And um, we'll catch you next time. Be sure to share with a friend, follow and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Kiriaki, over and out. <laughs>